What are you persistent in? In your own life, what are you persistent in? It's a great question. If we look at our readings this weekend, clearly uh, there is a theme of persistence. In our first reading from the book of Exodus, we have the story of Moses. And when he is persistent in holding his hands up and holding the staff of God, they mow down their adversaries. They are victorious in war. When he is inpersistent and he drops his arms down, they lose the fight. In our second reading, St. Paul says, Be persistent, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. So what are you persistent in? Our gospel passage continues the theme of persistence, and we hear today the story of another unnamed woman. This day, it is the story of the persistent widow. Remember, God wants to marry all of you. And when I speak of all of you collectively, you are the bride of Christ. You are his church, and he wants to marry you. So all throughout the New Testament, there are unnamed women. And those unnamed women are really us. They're you and I. Because we are the church, we are the bride, and the church is feminine. Refer to our church as Holy Mother Church. So the woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery, that is us. Today, our gospel passage speaks about another unnamed woman, the persistent widow. Now, there's another unnamed woman in our biblical texts, and that's in the story about the widow in Nain. For those of you who recall the story, there was a widow who lived in the town of Nain, which is pretty close to Nazareth, and her only son died. Now, just imagine you're living in Palestine the time of Jesus, you're a widow, and your only son has died. What is your future? Poverty or prostitution? Jesus is entering into the town of Nain, and he sees this woman, this widow, and her only son has died. Who do you know that is a widow that has an only son? Well, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Many of the early church fathers reflect upon Jesus' action towards this young boy who had recently died. Yes, it is one of the times where Jesus raises someone from the dead. Jesus raises himself from the dead, of course. Lazarus is raised from the dead. The young girl, Tabitha, a named woman, is raised from the dead. But also this young boy in name. So why does he raise the boy? Well, there's a foreshadow of his own resurrection. But was it also an act of compassion towards his mother? That his mother would see this widow and her dead son, but her dead son rising would bring this widow hope, as it would the Blessed Virgin Mary, who clearly would see her son dead. Staying on that same course... What is the story of the persistent widow? We have a widow who is persistent. Persistent in what? Asking for petitions. She is pleading with the judge. And the judge listens to her pleading. Is this not also a great image of the Blessed Virgin Mary? A widow who right now is before the judge of all creation, pleading on whose behalf? Yours and mine. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your help, sought your intercession, was left unaided. Why do we ask Mary's intercession? Because she's the persistent widow who's before the just judge. 
asking that he will render a merciful judgment upon us. Clearly, we know what Mary is persistent in. Mary is persistent in prayer. So what are you persistent in? What are you persistent in? Are you persistent in nagging? Are you persistent in negativity? Are you persistent in gossip? Are you persistent in being late? Are you persistent in complaining? Are you persistent in being the center of attention, always getting the last word? Are you persistent in hitting the snooze button every morning? Are you persistent in eating bad food and drinking every night before you go to bed? What are you persistent in? Are you persistent in complimenting people? Are you persistent in building people up? Are you persistent in affirming people? Are you persistent in generosity, in gratitude, in hard work? Are you persistent in prayer? Are you persistent in eating healthy food and exercising? What are you persistent in? We've heard again and again and again that our life changes when our habits change. And many of us are very persistent in our habits. And yet many of us are very unhappy with our lives. And thus we need to ask ourselves the question, what am I being persistent in? And is what I'm being persistent in helping me to flourish? Or am I living much less of who I truly could be and who God desires me to be. Many of us, if we'll be honest, we want to change who we are. And yet it's hard. Being persistent in changing habits, being persistent in choosing the good can be really hard and downright tiring. I'd like to use an example from our first reading today from the book of Exodus. Adam, please come forward. Adam, you can stand right there. I asked the boys before Mass today who would like to volunteer for my homily, and several of them uh, volunteered, and Adam has been chosen. Adam, please take your arms and put them like this. And don't let them down. Because everyone, Adam, is watching. (laughs) You see, in our first reading today from the book of Exodus, we hear the story about the Israelite people have entered into a battle. And the battle is against Amalek. And so Moses goes on top of a mountain. And on top of the mountain, Moses takes the staff that he has parted the Red Sea with, the staff that he strikes the rock with in the middle of the desert that water flows from. He takes his staff and he extends his hands and he prays. He prays for his people. And when Moses has his arms out persistently, The Israelites are victorious. But in all things, we get tired. When we get tired, we get lazy. And the reality is that persistence is hard. It is hard to be persistent in good things, but it's also hard to be persistent in evil things. So, as the scripture says, as long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands grew tired. How are you feeling, Adam? 
Are your arms burning a little bit? Uh huh. You see, Moses grew tired. And St. Paul says to us, I charge you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead. And by his appearance and his kingly power to proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Adam, is keeping your arms in that position convenient or inconvenient? That's what I thought. So we go back to our first reading today from the book of Exodus. Moses' hands grew tired. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands. How you doing, Adam? Jacob, Andrew, come here. I want you to support his hands. Adam, is it easier now? So my dear brothers and sisters, I want to ask you a question. If you want to be persistent in virtue, if you want to be persistent in changing your life, you need other people. Accountability, community, and fraternity is how you change your life. The majority of us have many aspirations for ourselves. We have dreams for ourselves. We don't want to be a nag. We don't want to always be late. We don't want to be negative. We don't want to be a gossip. We want to stop hitting the snooze button. We want to stop complaining. We don't want to be who we are today. And yet the vast majority of us will never ask anyone for help. The majority of us want to be more affirming. We want to build people up. We want to pray more, work harder, be filled with gratitude, and change the world. But we don't ask for help. Our habits change when we allow others to be a part of our lives and when others actually help us. I want you to dream just for a moment, my brothers and sisters. I want you to dream of a family. I want you to dream of a parish. I want you to dream of a marriage where individuals turn to each other and say, hey, you want to know what? This is what I'm trying to be persistent in. Could you help me? Could you help me accountable? Hey, you want to know what? This is something I want in my life that I don't have. Could you help me? to be persistent in forming this new virtue? Imagine a dinner table where moms and dads talk to their children about the habits they're forming. Or husbands and wives talk about the graces and the virtues they desire to grow in that week or that month. Our life changes when our habits change. So what are you persistent in? Are you persistent in our stubbornness, in our pride, or will we be persistent in striving to be the saints that God is calling us to be? My brothers and sisters, let us be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Let's win the battle and let's be victorious in the name of Christ. Through God's grace, may it be so. Gentlemen, thank you very much.